thank you, uh, Sarah, and thank you all uh, very much for coming. Uh, I'll start by saying, hello, uh, my name's Terence, I work for GDS. We're hiring, um, <laughs> probably, uh, but this is not an official GDS talk. Uh, nothing that I say represents my employer's views in any way, shape or form, um, mostly because this talk might contain swears. Um, <laughs> Severin's told me I'm allowed three swears and I'm going to use them all up right now. Um, I also, uh, as uh, I um, uh, absolutely uh, adored Nikki's talk earlier, as you can see, my talk is going to look almost as good. <laughs> Slightly more lo-fi because I didn't want to intimidate you all with my graphical prowess. So. Um, Aha! So this is the title of uh, this talk, uh, JavaScript plus SVG. Holy shit, you can do that! I had no idea. Um, this is uh, a combination of a whole bunch of experiments that I've been doing and noodling around on the internet and trying to work out, uh, is there a better way to do graphics? What are graphics? What, what can we do with them? Are there amazing things? Are there crazy things? Are there things which you can do and put in front of your peers and make them go, whoa, what's going on there? Um, so let's start by um, SVG, WGF. I love acronyms. I'm not going to explain any of them tonight. Um, I mean, I'm hoping you get all of these, right? It's um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so, so what is... <laughs> laugh at that. Um, so what, what is an SVG? So, so to start with, let's look at what the opposite of an SVG is, what, what an SVG isn't. So the, the sorts of graphics which you're used to, uh, things like uh, JPEGs and PNGs, are what's technically called raster graphics. Um, so what... <laughs> Big up the easy crew. Um, am, am I the only person who's seen all three seasons? Yeah, okay. Oh no, one person over the back there. Um, so, so this is a, um, not raster, raster graphics, but th this is a, uh, a JPEG. Um, and, you know, the, you get this out of your digital camera, but you'll notice that, like JPEGs and PNGs, they have problems, right? We, we know this, so PNGs can balloon in file size, and JPEGs, when you compress them to be smaller, they look crap, basically. If, if you sort of look around their... All right, I'm not going to use my laser pointer. If you look around the sort of edges, it's all a bit fuzzy. And, you know, if you try and blow this up to be on a billboard, then it's going to look blocking horrible. Let, let's zoom in uh, via the magic of PowerPoint uh, on the letter A. So this, this is what a raster image is. It's a series of pixels, and each pixel has a colour and maybe a transparency. But, but literally, that's it. And this, this hasn't changed for, you know hundreds of years, you know, when, when I'm quite serious, when, when people first started doing things like pontalism, this is what they're doing, they're saying, I'm going to put a dot here and it's going to be this colour. And when you blow it up, it looks, you know, it looks terrible. And look, look at the, the shape around there, that's not a smooth letter A, it's blocky. If you want to do stuff with colours, they, they go all smeary around the edges because, oh, well, we've got some black and we've got some yellow, so we'll half and half it. And it's just, uh, I hate it. I just hate it. So, uh, SVGs are uh, scalable vector graphics. So, uh, take this. Well, what shape is this? Circle. Circle. It's an ellipse. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> now, you think it is a circle because of your primitive monkey brains <laughs> and your ridiculous eyes which can't see properly. Uh, this is not a circle. You think it is a circle, this is not a circle, this is another raster graphic. If we zoom in to the corner of this circle, this is what we see. You know, it's all jaggy and horrible and fady. This will not do, because we want to create graphics which look good, not just anywhere, but everywhere. Whether they are blown up on a billboard, whether they're on a retina screen, whether they're on, you know, some watch or something like that. Graphics deserve to look beautiful everywhere. And when you, you know, zoom in and zoom out, on raster graphics, uh, the whole artifice just falls away. They, they, they are just nasty, and you should shun them and never use them again. Um, and that is a code of conduct violation because I've been shaming people's technology choices. So I would like to apologise that there are times when it's appropriate to use dirty, dirty PNGs. Um, and again, you need to get me off this stage. I'm not all right. Um, so let's let's look at. Um, SVGs, why they are literally magic. So, um, 
This is a circle drawn in SVG. So for anyone who hasn't seen it, I'm going to talk you through. So uh, this is SGML. It's a sort of uh, XML. You'll be very familiar with this. If, just stick your hand up if you've ever written HTML. OK, good, right. Um, so we start, we open an element. We call it SVG. We give it a namespace, which also tells us it's an SVG. We're real belt and braces in the SVG community. Uh, and then we're going to open another element. It's called circle. And it makes the shape of a circle. There is another one called ellipse, and there's all sorts of other things which we'll get onto. And we're going to say uh, the center uh, of its X position is at 256 pixels, and the center of Y is 128, whatever you want. R for radius. Uh, we like to be nice and terse. Uh, in, in SVG. The radius is 64 and we're going to fill it in green. Uh, we're going to close the circle element, going to close the SVG. Done. You have now drawn a circle and you know this is, this is a handful of bytes. This is memorizable. There, it, there's nothing to it. Now, SVGs are amazing for, for loads of different reasons. So uh, one is you can just save this as a file. Greencircle.svg and then you can refer to it in your HTML, image, source, green circle, SVG. Nice and easy, no, no different from any other graphics. Or you can literally just paste this into your HTML. SVG is a valid tag in HTML5 and in previous versions of HTML as well. So you just paste this in here. And because these are all uh, valid tags, you can give them classes or IDs or any of the other cool stuff that you can do in uh, in HTML, which means so I, I, I saw the, the twitches there from the CSS crowd because I'd stuck a colour in there, Phil, and I'd referenced it directly. Oh, naughty, very bad. That's not how we do things in CSS. As, as you don't need to. So with SVG, you give that circle a class, and somewhere in your CSS, you go, oh well, if it's a class of SVG circles, then turn it green or red or pink or you know whatever. <laughs> Brilliant. So you can start doing these things, and you can also start doing fun stuff with JavaScript. Ooh. Ooh. But we're not going there just yet. So um, this is the next thing about SVGs, which is magical, is they are tiny. So I run a site uh, which is super tiny icons. Um, if you, so this is the Twitter icon, which you'll all be familiar with. That's three kilobytes. You know, that's like the smallest you can realistically make it and still make it look good. In SVG, 433 bytes. That's not a typo, 433 bytes. I mean, that's, it's a, it's a, two tweets, basically. You know, you can describe beautiful things like that. I mean, the, the Flickr logo is two circles. I mean, it is, it is literally circle position one, color one, circle position two, color two, boom, done. And you could project that onto the side of you know, a 747, and it would still, it would scale, scalable vector graphics. You know, the, this little icon that I've got there, if you blow it up, you're going to get all this horrible jaggies. Um, so I've got, uh, I, I think we've got about 60 or 70 icons. I might show you them later, depending on time. Um, and they are tiny. I mean, literally, they are minuscule. So I've worked hard. Every single icon uh, on this site uh, that I run is under a kilobyte. It is, uh, the maximum file size I will allow is 1,023 bytes. Anything bigger, I don't care about it. And you can do it. I, I'm, I tell you right now, your logo can be done in under 1K. Uh, and I think that's amazing because um, how many people here um, access the internet on their telephone? Let's stick your hands up. All right. How many of you pay per megabyte? You're one or two of you. You are all very lucky. Most of the world is still paying per megabyte. If you're in particularly rural locations and you're on a crappy 2G signal, it really matters when we get file sizes small. Um, and if we, you know, if we could replace every instance of you know the GitHub logo, which is a ridiculously huge three kilobytes, with something which is 500 bytes, you know that's um, you know, like 10 percent, 20 percent, whatever it is, it's a small percentage of it. Think how much time, money, and you know lives we would save. I'm making <laughs> every second counts. But th this is why I love SVGs, is they are ridiculously tiny. Um, but we're not here for SVG Oxford. We should run SVG Oxford. <laughs> we're here for JS Oxford. Woo! Um, so here's, here's how you put JavaScript in an image. So um, 
open up the SVG tag, you give it its namespace. You also then need to give it uh, an X-link namespace to say, oh, we're going to be linking to something. And then you say, script, type JavaScript, um, and the link to it is over there. So you can have your image over here, a, uh, a separate JavaScript file. When the browser loads the image, it also loads the JavaScript, and it can execute. <laughs> That's fun. Um, you can also, um, if you want to, just write the, S, uh, just write the JavaScript directly into your image format. So you've got an SVG, you open it up, it runs JavaScript straight away, no external resources. Evil, evil. Um, <laughs> and, and again, this is, I mean, if I flip between the two, there is, you, know, you can see what the difference is. We have an on load, if you want it to, to run on load, you can have on mouse over or anything else. Um, and instead of uh, referring to an external thing, we shove it all in a, in a C data tag. And that's it, and you can put whatever you want in there. You, you can see there, get element by ID, get element by tag name, start doing stuff to it. So uh, I'm going to show you my first demo, if I've remembered the order of my slides. Oh no, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hands up if you think it's a good idea to put an executable within an image. <laughs> yes! My kind of audience! The rest of you are boring, boring, boring. So, um, and now a word from our sponsors about security. Um, <laughs> hey kids, security is important. Um, so there's a couple of things here. The first is if you're just writing um, sort of plain SVG like this and you're shoving it uh, in your <coughs> HTML, that's fine. The, the browser's JavaScript can interact with that just as it would normally. Now, when you start doing stuff like this, this is where it gets a bit hairy. So by default, and I don't think there's any way to break out of this, SVGs, uh, JavaScript is sandboxed. What this means is you can't write code in this SVG which interacts with the rest of the page. You can't write code in this SVG which interacts with another SVG. Uh, if you load up an external SVG, what you will find, depending on the browser and your security policies and everything, it may not run the JavaScript at all. If you do it in an iframe, it will, but then it is sandboxed to that iframe. So actually, when I first started talking about this, people had this really negative reaction because, as we all know, JavaScript is a security nightmare uh, and can do all sorts of terrible, evil things. But actually, the design of it with SVG is pretty sensible. You can do crazy things to your image, but you can't interact with the rest of the page. The rest of the page can interact with your SVG, but it can't go outwards like that. So security, it's fine, basically, uh, and anyone who says otherwise is a dirty liar. <laughs> so um, let me show you a, a demo. Right, let's see if I can uh, do this. So uh, this is uh, an icon that I've created. It is a calendar icon, um, which I think looks pretty spiffy. Uh, now, can anyone tell me what is special about this calendar icon? It's today's day! What? And no matter what happens, when you load up this SVG, it will show the calendar as today's date. And I'm going to show you exactly how that's done. Okay, so we can see here, so this is an SVG uh, on load, uh, in it. Uh, here's the function, in it, <coughs> in it. Um, uh, it says time, get day. I mean, th this is, I mean, I'm hoping this being JavaScript Oxford, no one's looking at oh my god, you can get the time in JavaScript. I mean, this is, this is like pretty boring stuff. But all right, so I've got the time, and now I said get element by ID uh, day. So where's the, where's the day one? There we go, it's down there. Um, it's got some, oh, I've put the style inside the element. I'm really sorry, CSS people. I'm, oh, oh, it is bad, but you know, it's a quick demo, it's fine. Um, so when this, when this loads by default, if JavaScript isn't working, if someone's turned it off, if there's a security thing, it will show February 29th, Sunday, okay? Uh, but as soon as it's loaded up, that JavaScript runs, it gets the user's local time, date, shoves it in there. Brilliant, you now have an SVG, which is not only dynamic, sort of scalable, but it's dynamic in the content that it shows. And this is, I mean, this icon, I think, is oh, that's pretty gorgeous. That is... I mean, I'm not like a super designer, and I ripped this design off from Twimoji, I think. But you know, that, that's, that looks pretty good, and it's you know, it's that much code. It, it's it's nothing. You can see there, I've, I've put some circles in. I've got some text. I've got some color, uh, and, and that's it. Um, so I, I'm I'm quite happy with that, and it's yeah, it runs a bit of JavaScript. And now this is a really simple example. So. Um, 
Let's just go for more demos. You want more demos? <laughs> yes. Damn straight. So, um, <coughs> the, the following demos I'm going to show you, I've not built. I've, I've taken a look at I understand how they work. I've had a play with them, but these aren't mine, um, and there, there are links to all of them. So, I uh, don't want you thinking that like I'm some kind of SVG god or anything. That would be ridiculous. No, ridiculous. <laughs> um, so, um, oh, you know what, Let, let's just go for this one. So this is on Wikipedia. This is a model of a thing, um, like a temple. I don't, I don't even know what it is, but it, lo it looks pretty cool that, you know, this has been drawn uh, as an SVG. And it, it is literally just draw a line from here to here, curve it here, color it like that. But when we click on it, If any of you need to take a moment, that's. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, how? I mean, that's just that's just bonkers. Let, hang on, do it again, do it again. No, don't have time for that. Um, but you can the, you can take a look at the code, and it is, you know, all right, it's a bit complicated just in terms of how they've designed it. But it is here is a shape on click, translate, transform, rotate. These are all pretty basic JavaScript things that you know, mo most people can, can do. Um, I'm going to show you uh, another couple that I like. Uh... Ah! <coughs> you can start doing 3D stuff. Now, I know some people like Ruth. Where's Ruth? Some people like Ruth like Canvas. And that's fine, <laughs> apparently. I went, I, went, I went to an SVG journey to get to Canvas, don't you? Yeah. So, <laughs> fair enough. So, look, so here's one of the things that I like about this, which is, again, one of the things that you can't necessarily do with Canvas, is that SVG is also fairly accessible by default. Uh, so let me just show you. If I flip back to... Um, uh, uh, this example, which I did earlier, you'll see at the top there is an ARIA label. So this means that when a screen reader comes along, it can read out that this is calendar. Okay, that's great. It can also read out the text, which is written there as text. So no, no, if you stick an image up and you go, oh, I need to write an alt tag. Oh, but the alt tag has to change dynamically. Oh, so that means I need to server-side generate. Don't need to do that. Do it all in SVG. The, it's text. It's accessible more or less by default. You, you know, you need to stick some ARIA stuff at the top, but all of your blind and partially sighted users are really going to thank you for this. Um, let's just take a quick look at this source code as well. And again, the, the, there's... There we go. It, it's not, you know, get, get some elements, display them. Um, there's a little bit of 3D maths and lighting, which, you know, is a bit tricky, but you know what? You can find some libraries online and just import those. Great, you're done. Speaking of which, um, uh, so uh, I think there's some music on this one as well. Um, this is designed to sort of show us what you could do as a replacement for, for Flash or something like this. Um, and again, this is all text, which you can type in a bit of JavaScript to animate, um, and then you can do some music because it's all HTML and you know it's <laughs> I'm, just, I'm enjoying myself I don't care about you That's, uh... <laughs> but there you go you know it, it, this is a simple scraps of text and XML and JavaScript which you can bash together to do all sorts of crazy things um, and it gets crazier and crazier so um, I love this demo so um, this is a video of an octopus. Does anyone know what the plural of octopus is? Octopodes. 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 Um, very close. Um, so at the moment, this is, this is HTML video tag, nice and easy. We can put filters on. We could use CSS filters, but we can also use uh, SVG filters. So uh, if I stick a, a blur filter on there, and I can increase the blur amount, decrease it. Um, we could do inversely things. All of this is just sticking an SVG on top, transforming it with JavaScript, and you can get all these sort of wacky uh, effects. 
uh, all just done by JavaScript in SVG. And I said I'd show this one as well. The other thing that I love SVGs for is things like interactive graphs. So, ooh, that was nice, it animating in, but wait, there's more. I could just do that all day. It's, like, it's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, hands up if anyone has ever had the um, delightful experience of being a Flash developer back in the day. No more, my friends, no more. <laughs> open standards, open source, works in every browser. And this, this is the thing, um, I'm, I might pop into can I use it if we have time, but SVG basically works everywhere. Uh, and it works even on old phones and old browsers, and you can start doing amazing uh, effects with it. Um, I'm going to pop and show you one more demo that I like, and then back to my slides. Um, so again, you, you can start doing interesting animated things with maps. That we've been talking about uh, earlier. You know, all of this stuff you could animate in various other ways, but again, because this is all scalable, you zoom in, it looks amazing wherever you're, you're doing it, you can start animating stuff like that, um, and uh, you can also start doing silly things like this. <laughs> so what, what we've done here is, I say we, not, I have nothing to do with it, um, <laughs> is this has taken a raster image, so if you remember raster mouse from earlier, um, so this, this is just a bitmap image of um, Salvador Dali. Anyone know the name of the painting? Five points to Hufflepuff. Um, <laughs> so we've taken a, uh, a raster image, we've put it inside an SVG, and then we can start doing weird, cool JavaScripty things with it. So. That's literally all I have to say, because it really is this simple. You know what, I'm going to show you one more demo, and then you can give me a great big round of applause. Um, which is, if you want to contact me, uh, which I'm sure you will after this, I'm available for weddings, children's birthday parties, and <laughs> things like that. If you go to edent.tel, um, this whole page is SVGs. My, my Contact Me website uh, is all those tiny SVGs. This entire page, which is interactive and you can click on it, and does it it's all done with SVGs. This page um, weighs in at, I think, 31 kilobytes. Uh, and it's responsive, and it uses CSS, and it uses JavaScript, and it uses all these other cool things put into to one thing. And it is so ridiculously tiny and so ridiculously amazing, I can't even begin to express how wonderful SVGs are. And I think you should go out and use them. Thank you very much. <laughs>